Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Being With The Shot. This week we celebrate Mr Wickham, the man who loves to run. It's the, oh, Matty, 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 Matty Bloomfield tribute episode. And it's time yeah. back of the net! Bloomfield scores! So with Mr Wickham set to make his 500th appearance in the famous light and dark blue quarters, we thought it only right that we dedicate this whole episode to our beloved number 10. On the way, we ask him some of your questions. Also, we hear tributes from teammates. You've even got a chance to win a signed pair of his boots. And we start with Matty Bloomfield himself. Let's catch up with the man ahead of his 500th appearance for the club. Blooms. 500 appearances coming up this weekend. I think we've had about 500 different questions off of Twitter, so we're going to get straight into it. Uh, starting with Jamie Chick, wants to know, what's been your favourite season from your 15 years with the club so far? Um, I think that would be last season. Um, it seemed like the culmination of four or five years of, of building since the day at Torquay. Um, you know, our budget was maybe halfway down the league, two thirds way down the league, and we overachieved. So to go and get promotion with with that group of lads, like I say, it was it didn't seem like a season of hard work. It was the culmination of four or five years. So that would have to go down as my favourite season, just because the lads, you know, what what a dressing room we had, a great group of lads. <laughs> Who makes your five-a-side team from everyone you've played with at Wickham? Oh, good question. Uh, right, so, in goal, five-a-side, I think it'd have to be Frankie, Frankie Fielding. You know, he's a bit smaller, more agile, good with his feet. Um, so Frankie would go in goal. At the back, I can't see past Alfie Mawson. Uh, he has to play. And then I have a direct decision between Big Mike and Russell to play alongside him. I'm going to upset one of them. Mm. Hopefully one of them's injured, so I don't have to make a decision. You know, uh, no. Nah, I think Big Mike just before he left, he was in supreme form. Went on and had a great career. Um, Russell obviously went to Peterborough and then moved on with Norwich. So uh, Big Mike and Alf, it's a fairly formidable, formidable back two. The midfield, it have to be um, the angry Bristolian Tommy Dock. I think great ability, unbelievable two-touch player. Kept the ball moving, could see a forward pass. Um, Ability-wise, should have played um, and had a lot more successful career than what maybe maybe he did. He was some player, Tom. And then up front, um, I'd have to go Jordan. I think um, couldn't get near him in the five sides and little games. Jordan Ibe alongside maybe Matty Phillips, I guess. Okay. Again, ability-wise, incredible. Just before he left, he was in supreme form. Um, gone on and had a great career. I think those two going forward would scare anyone. Yeah. I think including the keeper that made it a six aside team, but we'll let you do it. You want to make it a club oh. captain, so that's fine. Don't okay, worry. sorry, uh, mate. You added in keeper later. <laughs> we'll go six, seven. Yeah, I get Russ and Mike in there. there Thanks, mate. Uh, in your 15 years at Wickham, other than Gareth Ainsworth, who was your favourite manager and why? Favourite? Um, well, I, I loved playing for John Gorman because. You know, we seemed to win 4-3 every other week. That was a, a, a great time. Some of the football we played was incredible. Um, Gary Waddock's training sessions were just brilliant. He's one of the best coaches I've worked under. Um, Peter Taylor, the way he learned how to defensive shape and just manage to win games. There's a reason why he's got so many promotions under his belt. Um, but I think my time under um, Paul Lambert, those two years were were really a time where I grew as a player and as a person. Um, I went from a young player under John Gorman to really learn learn the ropes under Paul Lambert. He passed on so much knowledge and experience. Uh, and like I say, that group of lads that we had coming together under John Gorman, we grew as a group under Paul Lambert. And that the uh, League Cup year, that was something special. And then obviously the next year we came so close to, with the playoff campaign losing at um, Stockport. Um, that, was, that was two years where I really felt like I grew up. Do you hope to maybe manage the club yourself one day? Well, uh, maybe. I'd like. I, I mean, I'd love to. Um, coaching. I'm doing my badges now, and coaching and management is where I see see my future. Um, so, if the opportunity to, arose to manage the club one day, I'd, you know, I'd love to. The gaffer has gone from player to manager. Um, people have done it in the past, and um, you know, if the opportunity arose one day, I'd, I'd certainly never say no. Let's talk about the current day then. Alex Broom wants to know what's different about this squad compared with the other two squads you've been in when we've previously been promoted to League One? Um, I think maybe the, the continuity. We've um, 
the, the last two times we got promoted, I, if I remember rightly, there was quite a lot of change. Um, Gary one year sort of signed a, a lot of lads from, from older shot and we maybe lost a little bit of momentum. Um, Peter Taylor brought in some, some bigger names the year that we got promoted there and, and the squad was maybe um, a little disjointed and, and it, we had a couple of injuries. Tommy Dot got injured and, and, and Peter, we had a really tough start that year. Norwich away, Charlton away. Our first month was really tough and um, we, we struggled to sort of come back from that. So this year we, we had um, a, a lot of the same squad together. Um, the gaffer obviously um, strengthened as well, got some good loan signings in um, and we seem to go from strength to strength and, and we've sort of carried that on through the season. We had a tough month, last four games have been tough but we knew they were going to be, you know, Luton and Barnsley away, um, Peterborough away. It's been a tough run of games for us but um, we're still full of confidence and, and looking forward to the rest of the season. Do you have any regrets about staying so long and not taking a chance at any other club? Oh, regrets? No, no, certainly no, 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 no regrets at all. Um, you know, when you talk to other lads and they've experienced living in different parts of the country and playing at different training grounds, different grounds, sometimes you think, oh, it might have been nice to try, but no, 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 no regrets. Um, I've loved every minute of being here. There's been absolute roller coaster ups and downs, and there was times when I thought I might have to leave, times when I thought I might want to leave, but the the, the actual happening has never been, the pull has never been big enough and um, no, 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 I've, I've got no regrets about spending so long here. I've, I've built, you know, huge ties with um, people who support the club, people who work at the club, yourself included. We've obviously built a big friendship now and, and loads of the supporters I get to speak to and know on first name terms, so certainly no regrets. Yeah! As a player who is completely down to earth, level headed and truly at the heart of the club, what would your advice be to any up and coming player who's trying to make it? just to work their absolute hardest and, and every day is an opportunity to either impress someone or improve your game. Um, I, was a, I was a lad when I was at Ipswich and my dad said to me, I don't even know how old I was, um, if you fail through lack of ability then fair enough but as long as you give it everything you can look in the mirror at the end of the day and, and walk away with your head held high and that's what I've tried to stay throughout my career. That was one, one conversation we had that stayed with me for life. Um, if I try my hardest every day of my career and, and you know, have play as many games as I can for as long as I possibly can, I, at the end of it I'll be able to walk away knowing that I've, I've given it everything. My biggest regret in life would have been to not, not try my hardest and, um, and fall out of the game. So any young lads that want to do well, practice, 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 but also work, work as hard as you possibly can and, and enjoy it because it's that, that's what you're there for. We're going to move on to some more quick fire questions now, also from Twitter. So we're going to start with Rory Stringer, who wants to know who is the most talented player in this squad. Um, oh, talent! I suppose talent comes in in, in many forms. Um, you've got someone who springs to mind would be someone like a little genius who named him for a reason. He can he's got all the ability in the world, can get behind defences, create opportunities, score goals. Dominic, the way he can pass the ball, like I say to him before every game, just ooze quality, ooze class, because that's what he he shows. If you've got you know, players like Nick, Nick Freeman, when you see him in training, he can both go on his left, go on his right, and manipulates the ball really well. Um, so you've got several of the lads who you would class as talented. Um, you know, and then obviously um, Luke Bolton coming in with his pace, with the future that he's got in the game, um, you know, raw, raw ability and raw talent that we're hoping to nurture a little bit here as well. So um, there's loads of talent in the squad and, and um, loads of lads that I hope to see moving on to moving on to bigger things within within time. Hopefully that'll be with this club and, and drive us forward. Michael Kazantis asks, what's your favourite moment at Wickham? I think the final whistle at, at Chesterfield. Um, the final whistle at Torquay was 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 runs it close runs it close because you know that that um, near failure and the, the worries about what might happen to the club, the ramifications possibly of administration or falling out of the league, what might have happened, that was that was incredible. And th then that moment at, at Chesterfield when that final whistle went and we actually realised that uh, you know that four or five years of hard work had come together and we'd achieved our goal. Um, you know, those moments of euphoria are so hard to create in, in normal everyday life and the release of emotion was just incredible both of those days. TJ has asked, what is the best goal you've scored for Wickham? Let's do best and favourite as well. Best, I reckon, would be uh, Rushton and Diamonds away in 2005, I think. Something like that, yeah. Something about that, John Gorman era. Mm -hmm. 
Um, ball's gone into Stevie Claridge, as he did, always did well, bringing other people into play. Left it on my left foot, and I thought, well, I have a crack here, and before you know it, it's in the far corner. That was, that was a rare left-footed left -footed strike, I guess. So that would be probably my best goal. Favourite? Favourite was probably, in a weird way, Stevenage at home last season because, I mean, it meant nothing in the context of the season because we'd already got promotion, but the fact that it was a you know a real party atmosphere, I had my girls there and um, all my family and friends and, and we won the game and the sun was out, it was just a, a perfect way to sign off the season, I think. Says, what is your favourite game you've played in and why? Favourite game? Do you know one that stands out is Charlton away in the League Cup run in 07 08. Um, they were in the Premier League, although bottom, I believe, at the time. Um, and it was just one of those games where I just felt like I had endless amounts of energy. I started off the game left midfield, if I b remember rightly, in front of Steve O'Halloran. Um, then I think maybe Oaksy went off and I went more central. And I just, everything seemed to come together that night and it just felt like I. I was uh, my whole game came together that night, and I, I felt felt great. So that's probably one of the standout moments if I if I think back. What's the most challenging team and player you've come up against? I think well, that would be um, that would be in the league terms. It was Huddersfield player Jordan Rhodes. Every time I see that guy, he seems to walk away with the with the match ball. So if I never play against him again, that would be uh, that would be great. Um, that year that we played them twice, and they put maybe eleven or twelve past us. That wasn't much fun. And then in the League Cup run, you know, that Chelsea game when Claude Makélélé and Michael Ballack, they, you know, them guys seem to have eyes in the back of their head. You just think you'd nick it off them and they'd nick it around the corner and go the other side. So that was a real eye-opener. And at that point, it was like, you know, if you want to have a, a big career in the game, this is how good those guys are. And Matt Ng has asked, who's the best player you've played alongside for Wickham? The best player I've played alongside... I suppose, you know, ability-wise, it'd have to be Jordan when he came in as a... 14 year old or 15 year old and you thought wow this kid can this kid can play he went on his right foot top corner show him on his left top corner you thought blimey you know this, he'll go on and play for England I really thought he'd go on and play for England he's still got so much potential that he can go and fulfill and I every time I watch him I'm willing him to do well um, then obviously you got the boy wonder from last year Ibire when he came in um, so much natural talent the way he took the ball on the half turn and attacked every time he received it um, so those two for raw talent and ability and um, enviable pace and power, um, I think those two stand out. Okay, George has asked, uh, what is your go-to fizzy drink with a takeaway and which takeaway is your uh, food of choice? I don't, I don't really drink fizzy drinks, um, I've never really got the taste for them so my takeaway would be um, fish and chips, a bit boring I know but that would be my, my takeaway of choice. Uh, and if I'm going to treat myself, I'll have a nice little bottle of Peroni, cold Peroni out of the fridge and uh, enjoy that with my fish and chips. Delightful. Uh, token question from Gareth Evans, what's your favourite cheese? Feta. No salad is complete without a <laughs> bit of feta cheese on it. I was going to say, I was, you eat it alone or just... No, 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 I don't tend to eat it alone, but just, uh, yeah, a nice salad. Okay. It's delightful. And Luke Murray, finally, if there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play you and why? <laughs> I'm not really a big film buff. Um, my wife hates films, so I haven't watched one in about 10 years, but it probably have to be like, I don't know, I'd have to go George Clooney, I suppose, a bit of a silver fox, and unfortunately that's, uh, that's the way my hair's going these days, so um, yeah, I'd have to go for him, I suppose. And um, finally, just sum up what it means for you to make 500 appearances for the Wanderers, the club you joined as a 19-year-old, still here now and, and going strong. Yeah, it's tough to sum it up in words. Um, you know, uh, this club means so much to me, you know that does on a personal level, we've discussed it many times. Um, I was you know, speaking to Luke Bolton earlier on and when I signed here and walked through those double doors at the training ground, he was four years old and not even at school. And uh, 15 and a bit years later we're now sharing a house, sharing a dressing room and, and I'm still doing it and I, and I genuinely love it now as much as, as I did that day. Um, this is a special football club with so many special people behind the scenes. Um, volunteers, supporters, people who work down the ground, um, the management here who have played a huge part in my life and in my career. 
So um, from the bottom of my heart when I say that it means the world to me, um, I've got no regrets about never moving on. I wouldn't have made these bonds had I moved on and, and gone on to other things. So um, to reach that milestone is obviously special and um, I'm here hoping that there's still many more to come. Think of some of the managers, Paul Lambert, Peter Taylor, who have sat here and picked Matt Bloomfield over the last 15 years. Think of some of the players that he's taken to that pitch with. Surely they've got some stories to tell. He would run marathons and um, he would probably be a manager. I'm going to go a cricketer. I think, I think Bloons used to play a bit of cricket, yeah. um, I could see him dedicating himself to you know, becoming an opening batsman or a bowler or something, something active though definitely. He'll be a teacher and he'll be one of them strict ones and none of the kids will like him. <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, he'll be a teacher though, I think he'll be a teacher and everybody will love him because this is Bloons, he's just, he's Mr Dependable. Yeah. I think he'll be something health and fitness, I don't know maybe. PT or a nutritionist or something like that because yeah he's looks after himself model pro politician. What would you think? I think coaching yeah, or someone coach. in football. Yeah. Um, uh, marathon runner, triathlon. Yes, yeah. he loves he loves that. Doesn't yeah, he? He does. He's the <laughs> first one asking about numbers. Uh, desperate yeah. to see if he's run more than his uh, other midfield yeah, definitely is. players. Yeah. yeah, definitely marathon runner or something. I wouldn't wouldn't put him down to be a chef. From living with him. I wouldn't say you live with him, you have a few stories. Wouldn't put him as a chef or a comedian. No, I wouldn't have. Wouldn't have. Honestly, <laughs> true story, we arranged a wet in the, wet in the baby's head for him a couple yeah. of years ago. He didn't turn up. We went and we had we took a picture and we had to superimpose. I've got the picture if you want to have that photo. I've got that photo of him super, being superimposed on it. Uh, very sensible, looking after people. <laughs> Ooh, well I've only known Blooms two and a half years, and obviously he's a bit older now. He's got more responsibilities and children, so I don't know what he was like when he was younger. But now he's very sensible, as you can imagine. And uh, last night out, he spent the night looking after Lucky. <laughs> Bloons, look it's Bloons, like Bloons is Mr, he's Mr father figure, like he's always the one that's making sure everybody's cool and that, um, I want to I wanna lie and make up a story and say I caught him drinking and break dancing and spinning on his head but he's not to me fair, Mr Bloons is, he is Mr Bloons isn't he, he's just, he's Mr Dependable so, you got any stories, you've been here a little bit longer than me? <laughs> no, 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 yeah? you no, guys no, are no, starting, no, I know no, you guys no, are no, starting. No, 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 no. <laughs> He was put this way, he wasn't happy with me and Sean's uh when we were my bear put it that way. I'm not gonna say what Oh is it yeah? Oh, I must have been there. Another player, maybe yeah. six hundred. <laughs> this one for you, mate, you live with him. And um, one thing, annoying habits. If cakes are bought in, Blooms will know exactly how many grams of sugar in them. <laughs> and he will let you know just after you've eaten it. Nutritionist. Yeah. The worst thing about it is that he doesn't really have any night habit. Yeah, he's not, not one of them people there. Just, just a backup, <laughs> just a rubbish joke, really. Yeah. <laughs> Never stops running. I'm telling you, it's annoying. Like, forever, forever. And he's like, I keep saying this, whereas there'll be times where we finish workout in it and then he goes and do an extra run and then you're thinking, oh, Bloons is younger than me. And like, and if he's doing all this and that, and he's the captain and that, it's like, bro, I can't even go in early. And it's annoying because you have to go on maintenance and try and match him. So I tried to get fit with him one time and it was the worst mistake ever. So that's annoying that he's just so professional. Yeah, yeah I agree with that, chasing him on any sort of uh, fitness runs we do, because he's, yeah, he's at the front leading it, and, which is obviously great, uh, but it's not good if you're chasing him. <laughs> um, no, nothing. He's too nice. <laughs> Annoyingly, he's not annoying. Yeah, that's yeah. the annoying thing about him. He's too nice, <laughs> yeah. He's too, nice. too nice, that's fine. He's done all right, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's done well. Like, I was one of the first signings with him, with Tony Adams. And uh, he's, from day one until now, he's just been the same, just so energetic and what he's done doesn't surprise me. I think he's fantastic. Um, 
You know, he's a great model professional for the game and for the club. I hope he gets a statue from this. So, <laughs> obviously, I'll be the first one signing it for him. But no, he's definitely, he, he's deserved what he's got out, out of the club. I think he's been absolutely fantastic. And that's just a personal club for me. Yeah, same. You know, we've, from what he does around the place, he um, he's in first thing in the morning for everyone. He's the last one to leave. He just leads by example. And when yeah. we get young boys in, they always comment on blooms and, mm. and say how professional he is, how what a great guy he is. The fact that he helps all the young boys out all the time. So um, you know, I I um, hold him very high up in my estimation. And um, you know, we all say all the time, yeah. take take the mic, but we all say if we could be half the kind of person he is and, and professional he is, then um, would have done well. So, you know, great achievement, but he's not stopping here, that's for sure. He'll, he'll continue for a while longer yet. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, like I said, like, to do it at one club um, is unbelievable. And I'm sure people have come through the door to try and take his shirt and to try and replace him. But it just shows, uh, you know, the mental strength of the, of the guy to just be able to hold them off and also his ability on the pitch as well um, because a lot of people can forget that because he's so hard working and he's such a good person and he's such a good pro that they can forget of how good a footballer he is um, he's technically you know very good and gifted but also he works hard on it as well and um, yeah he's a real team player so you know, the fact that he's got this um, is amazing, but also doesn't surprise me because of the man he is as well, so. Blooms is one of a kind. Um, I've never met anyone like him, and his enthusiasm and endeavor every day is a, is, a, is a real credit, and yeah, it's just a pleasure to share a dressing room with him. So uh, yeah, can't take anything away from him, as he normally won the first one in the last believe that had absolutely everything right and he's just a great role model to try and learn off coming in and especially a thin an older player like him doing all the work just makes you think if I do that hopefully he can have a career out either. As a player he's um, as B said Mr Dependable um, I think he's um, underrated for the, um, uh, he's got a lot of mobility than people maybe think um, and yeah he's He's a leader and um, yeah, congratulations Blooms on a magnificent 500 and I'm sure you're going to get many more. Yeah, listen, I echo what he says. For me, I, there's not many people that I would say overly inspire me to, and, and that can push me and I say this and I've said this many a times, he is an inspiration. Like, when I, I laugh and joke in a sense but I see him do extra, I see him, it hurt him if the goal was conceded or somebody gets in front of him or and for me I look at him and I'm like see if he's putting in that much passion in training how can I not sort of thing so for me and for, to get 500 games at one club you've got to salute him and what Beanie says the you've got to respect him and sometimes I don't think he gets the, the acknowledgement you know what I'm saying or the recognition that he should get because I mean my nickname to him is Lampard because when he runs off me I feel like he's going to put the ball in the back of the net um, and he's always there run past me and then get back in so for me I've just got to say like, be proud of what you've what you've achieved Blooms um, it's an achievement and be small salute So what were you doing back in 2003? I know, like the last 15 and a half years, they kind of mould into one, don't they? I had just started secondary school, sorry about that. And it was when Bloomfield joined this club 15 and a half years ago from Ipswich Town. Uh, how's it gone for him though? How well does he know the club? Let's put him on the spot with our Mastermind Challenge. Name? Matt Bloomfield. Occupation? Footballer. And your specialist subject today? 500 appearances for Wickham Wanderers Football Club. Okay, off we go then. Uh, you were brought to the club by Tony Adams, who has since compared you to which England legend? Nobby Styles. Correct. <sighs> you made your debut against Russian and Diamonds in December 2003. Which player replaced you as a substitute in the 78 minute? <laughs> uh, Craig Falkenbridge. Andy Bell. Your first goal came against QPR in a two-all draw. Which other player was on the score sheet for Wickham that day? Nathan Tyson. Craig Falkenbridge. Oh, no. <laughs> Not too well, am I? In the game at Leighton Orient in 2004, you accidentally knocked the referee's front teeth out. What was his name? 
Uh, I don't know, but Keith Ryan was in Caretaker Charge. I don't get any points for that. Half a point? Kevin Friend. Was it Kevin Friend? Kevin Friend. Was it really? He's doing okay for himself now. Yeah. Uh, you don't stop banging on about your goal at Rushton that same season. What was the final score of that match? We won 2 1. Correct. Uh, you scored three times in a club record unbeaten run at the start of the 05 06 campaign. How many league matches did the team go without a defeat? 23. 21. Which future England World Cup goalkeeper did you score past in a 2 0 victory in March 2006? Joe Hart, Shrewsbury at home. Yes. Uh, who scored the first goal of Paul Lambert's reign as manager in a friendly win at Woking? Me. Yes. I got two that day. You did. Thank you. Can you name all six opponents that we faced in the run to the Carling Cup semi final? Yes, I can. Swansea away, uh, Doncaster at home, Notts County, uh, not in this order, it was Fulham away, Charlton away, Notts County away, is that five? That's five. Oh, Swansea, Doncaster, Fulham, Charlton, Notts County, beat Donny on penalties, uh, missing one. Oh no! Just the main one. The semi-final. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought you meant previous to that. Sorry, and Chelsea. Sorry, mate. Yeah, okay. got you. Uh, your only goal of the 08-09 promotion winning season came at Gillingham, but did you actually score it or was it an own goal? It was very close to being an own goal off Stuart Lewis's backside, but actually it just skimmed me on the way past. Questionable. Your first <laughs> game in League One in the 09-10 campaign was Gary Waddock's first game in charge. Who did we play, what was the score and who scored for Wickham? Colchester at home, JP Pittman from my sister. Score? 1-1. One, one. Yes. Yes. Uh, your last home goal in League One came in 2012. Who were the opponents? Notts County. Yes. You scored the first goal under trust ownership of the club at York City. Who else found the net that day? Samwood. Yes. One other. Stuart Bevan. Yes. Yes. After a long injury layoff, your first start in 14 months came against who in 2013? Oh, uh, Bristol City at home in the checker trade. LDV vans, my, my and you scored in that one as well. Frank, past Frankie, yeah. Uh, which referee showed you your only red card to date in the two-one? Oh, don't bring me up with this guy. What was his name? I don't know his name. I've erased it from my memory, but he, he I, yeah, I can't say what I think. Darren Deadman, uh, did you win the ball or was it a fair decision? No comment. <laughs> what was the score in your testimonial fixture against Chelsea? Oh, we got beat. The lads were hammering me because we just ran around chasing the ball all night. Uh, five nil. Five nil. Yes. Uh, your only goal in the Wembley year came at Hartlepool. Who scored their first EFL goal that day? Alfie Mawson from a corner. Yes. You broke your arm when scoring against which club in the 15-16 season? York away. At which ground did you make your 400th appearance for the club? Uh, that was away at Blackpool. Which Bluefield ground? Road. Correct. Bluefield Road. And finally, I've started so I'll finish. Can you recreate the celebration you did for your second goal at Doncaster that season? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no There's way. Point on the board come on, it. come on. You can't make me do that. Too old and wise. We'll talk up the score. I think that's a fair reflection. I think there'll be some Whitman fans that get more points than you on your own. Oh, I'm really disappointed. What runs did I get wrong? Let's go through these. Uh, Andy Bell was the one that Yeah, no, you. that Falcon was ages Ridge, ago. Audience, yeah. PPR. You didn't know Kevin You'd have Friend. got all of these. You didn't write to Kevin Friend and apologise. Do you know what? I've been, for years I've been meaning to apologise to him. I need to get his email address or something and apologise. We'll ask the club secretary. She'll Thank you. It. Yeah, I feel really bad about that. Uh, 21 games unbeaten it was in the uh, oh, yeah. John Gorman year. Are you sure? I think you should check that. Mm. I'm sure it was 23. Sure. Barry away, sure Elliot Bennett scored. Do I get any points mm. for that? No. Okay. Um, other than that, I think you've done okay there. The referee that sent you off, we've erased that from memory. No so comment. 14 or 15 points. Thank you, mate. Well done. Cheers. <laughs>So we've heard from Matt, we've heard from his teammates, but what about us? What do the Wickham fans think about our famous number 10? We're with Les, Reese, and Warren talking about our favourite Matt Bloomfield moments. Les, what do you think about Wickham's number 10? Matt Bloomfield is one of the best players we've seen at Wickham. Certainly he's been a club professional, he's a great guy, and he shows it on the pitch as well with his leadership and all his qualities he's got. Absolute legend. Um, more than 15 years with us and uh, totally committed to the cause throughout that period. So, uh, had his injuries but always bounced back and given 100% and more for, for Wickham. So, uh, thanks Blooms and uh, hopefully there's a few more left in the old legs. He's lovely. He's a really nice guy. He's been really friendly.
friendly since he came to the club. He was the first player to win the Players Player of the Year trophy. His first year it was done and he hadn't been in the club long. He's just so good with the kids and everything. He's just such a good guy. He's a battler. He's a real, real good battler, and he has scored some Im important goals for us. I feel like he's, he's very good player. Like he's, he's done a lot for Wickham, and yeah, he's just a, generally a really good player. Reese, anything you want to say about our number ten? Uh, he's really good for Wickham. He's a, he's a really good player, and um, oh, he's also really good on people. I love Matt Bloomfield. Yeah, long may he, I'm hoping he's going to be the next manager. Uh, how long have you been a, a Wickham Wanderers fan? 1962. And where do you think he ranks in all the players that you've seen play here in the last few years? I would say about 10, I would say, but that's good. I think he's an incredible player for the club. He's been a, a, a club captain this season. He's just an epitome of a footballer. He's just one of the best players that really, when he consistency that I can think of. Him and JJ just make a team for me. If you could describe Matt Bloomfield for me. Oh, it, loyal and a fighter in midfield. Great. And last, but by no means least, you've got the chance to win the boots that Matt Bloomfield used to score that goal here against Stevenage with last season. And it's dead simple to enter. All you need to do is get on Twitter and let us know your favourite Matt Bloomfield moment or story, maybe your favourite goal, and make sure you hashtag it, being with the shot, so then we'll see it and we'll pick one at random. Good luck. Make sure you get on that now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time with Being With The Shot. And it's yeah. back of the net! Bloomfield scores!